Hi there, Simon Stokes here, and we're going to take a look at an introduction to some music theory. Um, so basically, you may never have played an instrument before. You may have never DJed. You may have never done anything musical whatsoever before. And that's what this session is all about, is just getting you up and running with what you need to know, the kind of basics to get you going. Um, we're going to look at the notes on a piano keyboard, um, some terminology like octaves and semitones and things like that, major and minor, um, choosing a key for your track, and just playing notes and chords together, basically. Um, so by the end of this short session, you should be able to go through and start being musical you know creating musical ideas and knowing what you're talking about to a degree now it's not essential ever to know how to play a piano keyboard or anything like that you don't need to know these things it's just that it's very it's, it's handy you know it's, it helps if you can find your way around a piano keyboard it lets you get your creativity that's trapped inside you out and into the software if you can you know, negotiate one of these. So it's just a good idea to to learn the notes, to start practicing. I would always recommend picking up some sort of controller keyboard that you can sit in front of you and use. You know, that way you're going to get so much better, so much quicker. It's, it's not a quick process learning, learning how to play a piano or something like that. But, you know, if you've got one in front of you all the time, you'll work out chords and little things that you like, and that's how you help shape and define your sound and get better. So what I've got here is I've loaded up this grand piano device, which is just one of the packs for Ableton. And I've also got this float key device on the left hand side. And you can see it's up here. Now this is a Max for Live device. We've not really looked at Max for Live and we're not going to for a bit really. It's kind of Max for Live is a development environment for Ableton Live um, that lets you build your own uh, synthesizers, effects, whatever you like basically you can build and add into Live. So this is just a little one that gives me a keyboard so you can see when I play something on my keyboard in front of me. You can actually see it on there, which is really handy for learning this sort of thing. Um, so a lot of people aren't too clued up about what a piano keyboard is all about and how it works. Um, but it's actually a lot simpler than most people think. Um, if you look on the float key there, you can see that we've got two black notes, then three black notes, then two, then three, then two, then three and two then three all the way up the keyboard and that's the same on a piano keyboard basically a keyboard is just a repetition of the same notes over and over and over again and if you learn these few notes it's so simple to start working out how to play chords and keys and things like that so basically to start off if you find if you can find two black notes on a piano keyboard the note directly below them the white note right below them is c so here's two black notes so that one's c two black notes, that one C, and this is C up here. And you can hear that the C's are all the same note. They're just higher or lower than each other. So the distance between one C and the next C is what's called an octave. So on this, you can see I've got four octaves that I'm playing here. So yeah, once you can find C, it's very simple to find everything else because there are only a few notes on the keyboard. They just run from A to G. So if you start on a C and count up the white notes, D, E, F, G, back to A, B, C. So you find any C on a keyboard and you can count up D, E, F, G, A, B, C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D and I've run out of keyboard in front of me there. I was going to carry on, but um, yeah. So you can see that it's quite simple to find these white notes. And once you can find those, you can get around the whole keyboard, basically. As long as you can find a C. So if I want to find F on my keyboard, I find two black notes, and then I find the C below it, and then I just count up D, E, F, and that's an F there. And actually, I could look that that's the one directly below the three black notes. So I could go, that's an F, that's an F, you know? And you can quite quickly sort of work these things out. Um, once you sit in front of you with a piano keyboard, it starts to become a lot easier. You can even write on it. I highly recommend just writing on it with uh, a marker or you can get little stickers from music shops that you can stick the notes on it and that way you can find your way around it nice and quickly. Um, so that's all the white notes. The black notes are quite simple. Say for example, I'm on D here. So this is C, D. The black note just above D is D sharp. And the black note just below D is D flat. So we've got sharps and flats, and that's all. So this note, if this is G, then the black note above it is G sharp, and the black note below it is G flat. And you can see that G flat is also F sharp. 
So they're both the same thing. You can call that whatever you want. That can be this note here could be F sharp or G flat. Doesn't really matter. Um, the good thing is in Ableton Live we don't talk about flats at all. Everything's just a sharp. So this note would be F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and so on. So it makes it nice and simple to kind of use. And you'll see that actually it's even easier than that in live because it actually tells you all the all the notes in front of you very simply. So using that basic information, you can actually find your way around a piano keyboard very, very easily. If we know that some of the terminology, that if you go from one C to the next C, it's called an octave. If we go from one note to the note next to it, that's called a semitone. So we count up here, so that's one semitone, two, three semitones. So if I start on C and count up three semitones, I go one, two, three, and I get to that note. And that's quite useful in the future for building up chords and things like that. If you can count up semitones, very, very easy. And we're going to use semitones a lot as we go along. So that's really all the terminology you need to know to get going. Um, it's not complicated. It's not difficult. Um, you just have to get around, get your head around it. Um, so first thing we normally do when we when we start a track is to choose a key for the track. Um, so that is just choosing basically a series of notes which just all work together and we can kind of use that to kind of build all the musical stuff of our track so that it sounds coherent and works together. Um, so you normally choose a major or minor key to start with. You might have heard of these. If we play a, mi a major chord, you can see it sounds quite happy or upbeat. I'm just going to play it a bit lower. So there's a major chord. This is called a C major. And if I play C minor, do you hear it sounds a little bit more melancholic or sad? So we've got major sounds happy, minor sounds sad. That's the main difference. So if I play something in major, you've got... Messed up some notes there because I can't actually see my piano keyboard where I am. I'm just kind of doing it through through a, a pop shield. Um, but so here's a here's major. And then if we play the same thing in minor. You can hear how that sounds a lot more. It's a very different sound to it. It's more sad, more melancholic. And the good news is that when we're working with um, electronic music, a lot of house, techno, even trance music, quite a lot of different styles of electronic music, pretty much all of it is in a minor key. So that means we can disregard all major keys, really, if you're wanting to make a, most electronic music. Even a lot of pop music is made in minor keys. You can... Uh, when something's all in major keys, it sounds w really uplifting and really kind of uh, positive. Um, there's normally, a, even in pop music, there's normally a mix of major and minor keys together. But I'm making techno music, house music, anything like that. We can pretty much just use minor keys. And you can see the difference between it. If I play a major, major chord and a minor chord, it's just one note, that middle one there. So basically, what we're going to do is, to get up and running, if you've never made music before, is to just start by making your music in the key of C minor. Now, you'll find lots and lots of tracks are made in the key of C minor. Um, a huge percentage of electronic music tracks are actually made in this key. Um, and its reason is it's very simple to learn. So all we need is three notes, essentially, to get up and running. We use C, D sharp, and G. Um, and with those three notes, we can pretty much build an entire track. So I, entire, I recommend writing those down just now, um, keeping them in front of you, and we'll work it out. Because if you think about it, when we start down here, here's these three notes. That's just those three notes, and you can see how they all work together. No matter where you play them on the keyboard, they always go together, you know? Um, so that's a really nice way to start working it out. So we're going to start building a track by using those three notes. Um, so we're going to move on to looking at how to add in some synthesizers and stuff shortly. <laughs> 